Welcome to Advanced Contracts. We have four topics to discuss and we'll probably do two today in today's lecture. This is week uh, 10 in the Business 241 class at MCC and we cover both insurance and bankruptcy law. And we describe this as part of our contract series because we focus on the written document that is uh, used in an insurance contract. And we have talked about antitrust and pricing and of contracts, but certainly the opposite end of, and the more advanced contract is what happens when a company runs out of money and goes bankrupt. So we will be covering bankruptcy, but not personal bankruptcy today as well. Uh, starting off with insurance, all of you know that I enjoy very much talking about our vocabulary in our chapter before we really head into the assignment, and I love this, the use of synonymous terms for multiple choice questions. So you need to know who is an insurer, and who is an insured. The insured is the person who is the beneficiary, who receives the benefit of the contract. The insurer, and also the underwriter, who is someone who works for the insurance company, uh, are, are on the other side of the agreement. Uh, the, what they are negotiating, and which is a document called a policy, is the contract between the parties. The, in, in the first part of your assignment for this week, I ask you to tell me if you procured your insurance policy through an agent or a broker. Very different things. The broker has a number of policies to show you from State Farm, from Allstate, from Progressive. And the agent uh, is definitely someone who probably just represents an office like State Farm. So while there can be negotiations in terms of price with inside the company, there won't be the competition factor to reduce the contract or the policy. I'm sure all of us know that as part of having an insurance contract, we have to pay something that's called a premium every month. That's what we pay on a monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, annual basis to a company for the policy on an annual basis. And we also have something that's known as a deductible, meaning if you make a claim, there's a certain dollar amount, sometimes under 500, sometimes under 1,000, by which we don't uh, make, an, we don't get that part of a claim. That's sort of our contribution if there's a fire or flood or a car accident to the incident. And that comes out of our pockets and not necessarily the insurance company's pocket. Uh, for purposes of this exercise, um, we have, uh, an assignment to self-audit one of many kinds of insurance policies that each and every one of us carries around with us. Um, so you get, in terms of your assignment, uh, the opportunity to reach in your wallet and pick out your insurance card for driving your car, your Blue Cross or Aetna health insurance card, your renters for your place that you live, your homeowners, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about life insurance and, and CGL policies in a minute. As part of your assignment, you're asked to take three steps. One, understand that on the one side of the card, there are terms and conditions that are business terms, dollar amounts. You have $300,000 in auto insurance coverage if you hit someone. You have um, uh, a life insurance policy that's $2 million or two and a half times your salary at MCC. Uh, if you are uh, carrying a life insurance policy. If you have Blue Cross and Blue Shield, maybe a business term on the card will be that uh, they don't pay for specialty doctors or dermatologists unless you make a $50 copay. But typically, you'll have a small uh, replica of at least the business terms of the contract. But you may need to go online to find a policy from Blue Cross, from State Farm, in order to complete the next two steps of your assignment in this class, which are knowing what is included and knowing what is excluded. These are different concepts. What is included is what uh, an insurance company will pay for. Will they cover a flood in your basement? Will they cover um, or do they exclude Uber rides, in your, if you are doing an Uber business out of your car. Do they include sump pump failures by endorsement? Do they exclude cedar shake roofs? So what I'm asking you to do is take a policy. First five points of the assignment is talk about the uh, 
what is the business terms and the business terms between you and your insurance company. Second part of the assignment is to talk about things that are insured and things that are in, in included. And the third part is what is excluded. I'm asking you to do a self audit and if you look at the assignment instructions, it mentions that there are ways to get discounts. Discounts have to do with the business terms section. What are some business uh, uh, terms discounts that I can think of right off the top of my head for you to look for in your policy? Perhaps you're getting a B average at MCC and you're getting a good student discount. Perhaps you are um, bundling your insurance, meaning you have your homeowners, your car insurance, all bundled together with State Farm and they offer you some form of what they call a multi-line discount. Uh, perhaps you are having a monitoring stick to show that you're a good driver in your car. Perhaps you're one of all states good drivers and you get a good driver discount. So those are things that um, you can list off in the business terms analysis that you're going to submit with your memo assignment. What I'm hoping that you will find, as many of my students at MCC over the last decade have found, is that if you um, if you are auditing your policy, you may realize there's a car left on there that you're paying for that you perhaps shut off in the winter. There's a student that's away at college that perhaps you're still paying full price for their uh, insurance on your policy. Perhaps your ex-wife needs to come off of the policy. This is a time where you are to look at this and see if perhaps if I upped my deductible, I could lower my premium amount. Uh, so I want you to go through this exercise and look at the checklist that's provided in the, dis in the assignment box under modules and see if any of those discounts apply. Another suggestion that I have is that you also, if you've only used an agent, if you shop your policy out to a broker and see if that makes any difference. Uh, many of my students point out that they're entitled to a military discount and sometimes GEICO is better than USAA. So this is the time to do some self-analysis. You're about to file your income taxes April 15th. Think about ways you can save yourself and your family and your loved ones money by auditing your insurance policy. Now back to insurance policies. Life insurance. There are two concepts that you need to know for the purposes of this class. What is whole life insurance and what is term life insurance. And they differ in two substantial ways. One is if you run the length of term insurance, i.e. for 10 years, when you're finished making that monthly payment of life insurance premiums, you will not get anything back. If you are running a term policy, it is as if you are investing in a policy that should you cancel it, there will be uh, the premiums will be sent back to you in some form. And so you need to check out what those two kinds of policies are. Term policies are typically less expensive than whole policies because of this feature. And also what they cover is also different as well. If you are insured by uh, Sears and Roebuck or Home Depot, you may want to pull out what kind of ins life insurance they're providing you to see what benefits you're receiving. Back to what I know everyone is carrying around, either a renter's insurance policy or a homeowner's insurance policy. Let's talk about those just for a minute. Some of the unusual uh, uh, situations you may find yourself in is that lightning strikes your house. It blows the power out in your house. You go to turn in your claim for the fire that it caused to State Farm. Did they cover the fact that your computers and, and TVs that were on are now blown up and not working? Maybe not. Maybe you needed an endorsement for that. There are some of the renters and homeowners policies that do not cover any of us in terms of earthquake or nuclear war. And people typically in Illinois didn't care so much whether or not they had earthquake insurance until rather recently. But you might want to check your policy for what is covered. Again, with car insurance, uh, they use your zip code to come up and your age to come up with a, a part of the evaluation as to what to charge you, as, as well as the number of the people in your family that are on the policy. A st uh, young gentleman necessarily, 25 years and under, definitely pay a higher rate in terms of car insurance than young females based on driving statistics. Uh, whether or not you've had any previous moving violations can also affect your price and premiums for your negotiation of your policy of car insurance. Uh, so check those out and check out many of the discounts that are both suggested in the literature, in the course materials, and also in the textbook that you've been provided. And also by looking on the, in, if you don't have the policies in hand, you can either call your agent or broker and get a copy of one, or you can go online and upload them. Uh, 
What is a CGL policy? For those of you who are young accountants here at MCC, a CGL policy can be an awfully wonderful band-aid to protect the profits and losses that a company reports. CGL stands for Comprehensive General Liability Policy, and most businesses have such an, a corporate insurance policy. Ways that I can tell you that I have saved my clients in the past is if you are sued at a company for sexual harassment and you have a, an anti-harassment or an EEO writer, the claim, the litigation, the defense of the company can be turned over to the insurance carrier as well as in asking them to take on the representation of the company and or pay out any damages that are assessed. If you have a marketing endorsement and one of your copywriters in your company forgets to mark up an ad and the ad goes out and suddenly you have to sell out of a product and sell everyone every every item that you have because something was marked on the ad incorrectly or instead of being $99 something went for 99 cents having an endorsement under a CGL policy is also beneficial to help um, if you have the marketing endorsement. Having said that the book does cover farm insurance, marine insurance, um, other forms of, that are, of insurance that are unique to different kinds of businesses. And, um, and I do tell people that when I went to law school and, and when I got out and I started at an insurance coverage firm, I'd never heard of the word subrogation before. And again, the terms are subrogor, subrogee, that, are, that refer to the parties to that type of agreement. But what that means is, if I'm in a car accident, and State Farm pays for my car to get fixed, even, and it's the Allstate driver's fault who hit me, State Farm can sue Allstate to recover the monies they paid to fix my car under a piece of litigation called subrogation where I subrogate my rights to State Farm, I sign something, and they step in my shoes and send a lawyer to court to go after the Allstate company and their driver. Uh, if you are having difficulties with an insurance carrier, I tell my students two things to know and say. If you're finding that you have uh, items that are covered under your policy and they weren't paid, or as I have had happen in the past, for some reason the insurance carrier starts uh, your uh, monies towards your deductible starting over mid-year and they've got the calendar year wrong and you end up starting to pay out of pocket again, or they forget to put the computer cap on paying out of pocket and you know that you've paid over 20% and suddenly you're paying into their 80%, you can call them up and say, hey, wait a minute, we have a policy, we have a contract with each other, and you're not living up to the terms of it. If you get pushback or you don't get an easy resolution, I will tell you to say two things. You say, you are acting in bad faith towards me because there is a duty of good faith under the insurance con con contracts that are issued in most states in the United States. And if they still don't balk when you bring up the bad faith words, you can say, and I'm going to turn you over to the Springfield, Illinois Department of Insurance with my claim of bad faith. Insurance carriers don't like to hear those two words, two phrases, bad faith, and I'm turning you over to the Department of, I of Insurance in Illinois. So I would suggest you use that. You do need to know um, that if there's an ambiguity in your insurance policy, and that's why I'm sending all of you to read all of them that that ambiguity gets interpreted just like we learned under regular contracts towards your benefit. What does that mean? Perhaps you have a homeowner's insurance policy that says something like um, that if, a, if your dog bites a guest more, um, more than once or if, you, if there's a dog bite in your home, they will or will not cover you for that. Perhaps they will say we will not cover you for this and that kind of pet in your home. If these aren't clearly defined it, by the weight of the pet, the breed of the pet, the, the fact that they won't cover 20 foot boa constrictors and you have one and it, and, it, and it strangles somebody, if they're vague terms in the policy, they get interpreted in your favor, not in the favor of the insurance company. So I'm, ask, I'm suggesting that when you do this audit, you look for the things that I've put on the checklist in the rubric and there is an old movie called Double Indemnity that you might want to check out, and if you don't know what the terms double indemnity mean, you can look that up quicker or you can watch the movie that has Fred McMurray in it. And there are many other insurance movies that show you how, what the lengths are that people go to in order to make a claim under their insurance, i.e. the Fox Lake sheriff who was faking his suicide and making it look like a murder because under suicide his wife would not recover under the insurance policy. 
that, that suicide clause that I'm referring to, and I'm hearkening back to your assignment for this unit, is in fact an exclusion. So it, maybe there's a suicide clause in your life insurance policy that you want to mention to me in your assignment. But again, check the rubric, check the assignment, and check the chapter. And you should be all set, set to have a discussion over your self-audit and the things that you've learned about insurance here at MCC. Be assured, I think that you will have covered it all.